In an event, we have integrity in public life legislation since 2013, but it has never been operationalized. This legislation is not new to the Caribbean region. If you look in various islands across the region, you will find integrity in public life legislation. You look to Grenada, and integrity in public life legislation is there. And uh, as you look to Grenada and uh, the act itself, it says uh, that integrity in public life is an act to ensure an integrity commission in order to ensure integrity in public life to obtain a declaration of the assets, liabilities, income, and interest in relation to property of persons in public life, to give effect to the provisions of the Inter-American Convention Against Corruption and for matters incidental thereto and for purposes concerned therewith. And this is an act number 14 of 2007. Antigua and Barbuda, since 2004, and it says, an act to provide for the establishment of an integrity commission for the purpose of receiving declarations of the affairs of persons holding specific positions in public life for the purpose of establishing probity, integrity, and accountability in public life and for related matters. Similarly, you go to Trinidad and Tobago, and this act has been in existence since 2000, and it says an act to provide for the establishment of the Integrity Commission to make new provisions for the prevention of corruption of persons in public life by providing for public disclosure to regulate the conduct of persons exercising public functions to preserve and promote the integrity of public officials and institutions and for matters incidental thereto. Regardless of which one you refer to, they all speak basically to that of corruption. Interestingly, though, that most persons, when they hear of integrity in public life, they think of politicians only. It is only ministers of government who this act refers to. And we hear it for various reasons. Because in many aspects, those out there who speak to persons being corrupted, they refer to ministers of government perhaps more than anyone else. The act in saying it was passed in 2013, and it is interesting is that civil servants who are here are questioning different aspects of the act. It says to me that perhaps the consultation process that was needed prior to the legislation being passed in Parliament, it was not undertaken. The fact is, though, that the Act has been passed and it covers civil servants and a very wide cross-section of civil servants. This morning, we are here to indicate to you what are the requirements of the Act and how the Act will affect you. There are concerns. The concerns are noted, and perhaps it is for Cabinet to look at those concerns. However, as the concerns are noted, I said to you that integrity in public life legislation and putting a commission in place by itself will not bring about an end to corruption in public life. Corruption in public life will only come about, or uh, an end will only come about to it so much as persons are being honest. Uh, that really is what the legislation is about. 
persons who serve the public being honest. And if persons are being honest, the reality is, is that you have nothing to be fearful of. Like you, I do agree is that we do not like to expose our assets, we do not like to expose our liabilities for other persons to know. We don't like it. We want our business to remain with us. I'm quite sure if you ask the other members of parliament, they do not necessarily want to fill out a declaration form indicating to anyone what their assets are, what their liabilities are. But as public servants, in many respects, we are called to a higher standard than many others. It is something, it is a standard that comes with being civil servants, with being members of parliament. I've looked at it and I've recognized that even executive members of political parties are also required to disclose their assets and their liabilities. And I said to the AG, are you saying to me that the regular man who perhaps is just a nominated member from a constituency and the executive of a political party, that he or she is required to do so? And yes, that person is required to do so based on the legislation which is in place. There are those who perhaps may decide that based upon this particular piece of legislation, I don't want to work for government, I don't want to be on a board, I don't want to be a member of a political party, and that of course is a choice that one can exercise. Quite often though, the public is of the view is that there is corruption in government, and the point not only to politicians, but the point to a number of different persons who work for government. Today, tomorrow, you buy a brand new vehicle, and the question is, if you're only making this salary, how are you able to do so? Whether it is you have won the lottery, you have taken a loan from the bank, however you have been able to finance it, you have been able to do so. But questions are being asked as to how you are able to do so. And the legislation is basically here to protect us and to be able to answer those particular questions. You have all the questions, and I don't want to single out any particular group of civil servants. So I will not do so. But the questions are being asked. And how do we provide the public with some measure of assurance is that what we are able to do financially, we have been able to do it by legitimate gains in our finances? How do we do so? Left to us, I don't think we are going to go on radio or television and give that information to the public. We will not. And so there must be some mechanism that if there are questions to be asked, that those questions can legitimately be answered. The legislation attempts to do exactly that. For me though, part of it is even more fundamental because as public servants, we are serving a wider body of persons. We are serving the public. The public interest must be protected at all times. A few years ago, we had the unfortunate distinction that civil servants and non-civil servants were affected by the fact that we had a high public debt. Increments could not have been received, positions frozen, health care, 
and other social services affected because of that high public debt. We can speak to the many effects of it, but corruption in government can also cause the very same things to happen. If we have corruption taking place in government, it can, it can stifle the finances of the government. We have been able to boast that over the last two to three years, we have given civil servants a double salary. Corruption can wipe out that. I'm sure all of you are happy that from year to year, you can receive your increments. Again, corruption can bring an end to that. Because if it is that persons, you have contracts, for example, being overinflated, because persons are getting back some of the money under the table, that is going to affect the finances of the government. If those who are responsible for collecting the revenues of the government are using the revenues for their own purposes, again, the government's finances will be affected and we in turn will be affected. More importantly though, I don't think that Minister Phipps wants to be hearing complaints from persons that they can't get medication at the hospital because the government cannot afford to pay for critical medication because the finances are lacking to do so. As the Minister of Education, I don't want children to tell me they can't get their money for the SAFE program. They can't get money to buy basic necessities within the schools, the toilet paper and the chalk are not forthcoming simply because the government cannot afford to pay for it. And when you begin to do the analysis, it is not that the government isn't collecting revenues, but the revenues aren't coming into the treasury of the government. And so while we may look at it, that the government is probing into my affairs. The government has a greater and bigger responsibility to the people of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that is the responsibility that the government must protect. We must protect those innocent persons out there, the young children who must have a future in this country and a future in which, not only in terms of the financial resources, we are able to do the things for them, but a future in which they can point to the members of parliament, they can point to the persons working for government and feel comfortable that proper examples are being set for them in terms of what we are called upon to do as stewards of this nation. Some may not like it, but it is a reality. And the fact also is that when this government campaigned, Team Unity, we said that there must be a good governance agenda. This is part of the fulfillment of the good governance agenda upon which we campaigned. It spoke to consulting with the people and that is why yesterday, the law was gazetted, and the very next morning, we have called those who will be affected to consult with you and let you know what are the requirements of the legislation. Because that too is part of the good governance agenda, ensuring that you as civil servants, you know what will be required of you. Part of the good governance agenda is ensuring that the legislation that was passed since 2018 is now being 2013. Some five years later in 2018, 
is now being put into effect. And so we're looking at it from all of the different angles. We have said freedom of information must become part of the good governance agenda. And we have gone to parliament relative to freedom of information. It's not just in sync, it's we're doing it. Because a similar announcement would have been made in Nevis that the legislation will come into being and that the members of the commission that they have been appointed. Again, we understand your concerns. We hear your cries. We will look at them. It is far reaching, your children, your husband, your wife, because again, you can cover up things for yourself and whether it is you want to use a wife, a child or whoever to hide the assets, the legislation is saying is that you must not be able to do so. We recently had a big song and dance right here in the Federation. We looked to Antigua. We heard a minister of government resigned because of impropriety. And so we have to protect ourselves. There is a saying that when your neighbor's house is on fire, make sure that you wet your house to ensure that the fire also doesn't affect you. As I was sitting there, I began looking at some information relative to integrity in public life online. And interestingly, I came across a particular article. And many of us have heard of the story of the emperor and his new clothes. Who in here haven't heard of it? Well, it's the first time I saw that particular story being linked to integrity in public life. And the article here says there are different paths in life set for all of us. Some are called to be teachers, doctors, taxi drivers, electricians, operators, while others are called to positions in public life or to fulfill a public function. These positions require a person to live a life that is constantly under the microscope of public scrutiny. The life of those engaged in corrupt activities can be likened to the children's story called The Emperor's New Clothes, translated by Hans Christian Andersen in 1837. This classical story refers to an emperor who was fooled into wearing invisible garments by two swindlers who pretended to be weavers. Eventually, it was brought to his attention that he was naked instead of wearing his birthday suit. The emperor's decadence eventually led him to rely on the reports of others who were deceptive and left him with his assets exposed to the public. I think we know what assets they're referring to there. But it says this story can be likened to those who fall into the temptation of indulging in corrupt practices. These persons, and perhaps, and I repeat, these persons and perhaps their family members may be subjected to public ridicule and ostracism. A sound character of integrity would be the form of clothing that a person may trade away for one that they think may get notice or ahead in life. Think about it. 
You have other sound correct all the time, but someone tries to corrupt you, and you feel that things are going to be better for you, you have more money, more assets, you can do more things, and so you trade away the good integrity that you had before becoming corrupted. And you think you may get noticed or you get ahead in life, you're driving a fancy vehicle, you have the big house, you're getting noticed, you're getting ahead in life. The deception like the emperor who thought that he impressed the crowd is that his newly adopted character may make an individual feel like he or she is untouchable until the reality exposes the ugliness of the situation. Someone decides to be a whistleblower and the ugliness of the situation comes to light. And persons then begin to see you differently. The legislation speaks to fines of 30,000. It speaks to going to jail. I don't think any of us really and truly would want that. The only person in the narrative setting an example to be followed was the child. And the child here is referred to as being the whistleblower. The child was the only one who was not afraid to be honest and to do the right thing despite the consequences. And the Honorable Van Seer is saying, the child said what? There is no clues. And if you remember the story, the weavers said to the emperor that they are those who may criticize your clothes. And if they criticize, it is because they're stupid and it is because of this and they're that. And so no one wanting to think I'm stupid, they sat there and they don't want to be dismissed, etc. They sat there and they said absolutely nothing. But the child being innocent, not really knowing the consequences, he said, you ain't have no clothes, you're naked. And it's only then everybody began to say the same thing. And so it only takes one person to say that I've corrupted you and everyone begins to recognize that what you have, you have not worked hard for it, but you have unlawful, illegal gains. You have been corrupted, and you lose everything as a result of that. And so the child was not afraid to be honest and do the right thing despite the consequences. The lessons that could be learned from this story can also be found in the seven principles of public life described in the Nolan Committee's first report on standards in public life, 1995. These principles are one, selflessness, two, objectivity, three, accountability, four, integrity, five, openness, six, honesty, and seven, leadership. Unfortunately, none of the adults had lived up to these standards in the story. These principles not only apply to those in public life, but to everyone in spite of status. The Integrity Commission's watchwords, do the right thing always, can be translated into the personal mantras of every man, woman, and child, regardless of popularity, economic standing, ethnicity, and gender. Although the concept does seem utopian, one should consider it is the path that is laid for future generations to follow. At least, it would not leave an individual with their assets exposed, with others appearing at the reality of their situation. Quite a bit to think about from a story that perhaps we would have never looked at in that particular light, especially relative to integrity in a public life. As I close, I said to you that the legislation is here. The legislation is being put into effect. But as I said earlier, the legislation is here to protect all of us. The legislation 
will not make us honest. It is only ourselves who can make us honest. And if we are honest, in regards to our own dealings as civil servants, as members of parliament, as board members, then we have absolutely nothing to be fearful of. The information is supposed to be held in private and only if there is need to do such would it be revealed to the public and your assets might be laid bare for everyone to see. Thank you. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS, St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.